In terms of versatility and just straight up raw talent, Robbie Gordon was one of the greatest drivers in motorsports history when you really look at the big picture. Whether it was NASCAR, CART, IndyCar, Trans Am, IMSA, IROC, or rally racing, he was always going to jump into something and be competitive right from the get-go. Sure, there aren't many championships to his name outside of a couple in stadium super trucks, but in the end, it really doesn't matter. Robbie Gordon was one of the most entertaining drivers to watch as a kid. Whenever he was running up front, it was always great to see, but on other days, he wasn't as competitive. He was being a straight up nuisance. In every single motorsport Robbie Gordon ever competed in, it was always someone else's fault it seems, or he was just involved in anything that was going on, whether it was his fault or not. In my opinion, his shenanigans reached an all time high when he was in NASCAR full time in the early 2000s. This is the shenanigans of Robbie Gordon. The first incident on our list doesn't even take place during a race, but practice. But it's during one of the most important practice sessions all year in speed weeks for the Daytona 500. The first to be involved in Robbie Gordon's NASCAR shenanigans was none other than another open wheel guy in Tony Stewart. Just going out there, working with the draft, trying to feel what the car would be like for the 2000 Daytona 500 was his goal. But the number 13 Menards Ford would have other plans. And uh, another problem on the racetrack as Robbie Gordon He's had a problem. He's obviously spun because the flaps are up on the back of the car. Going in the corner right there, he just Whoa. gets a touch. Right, ooh, and the back end gets off the gas. Was that Man. Tony Stewart that he made contact with Robbie? And through the grass. Uh, you can see that Robbie Gordon is having a uh, what appears to be a heated conversation with Tony Stewart. There's uh, Dale hey, actually trying to, to incite things a little bit. He likes a little bit of excitement. He's a uh, he's uh, trying to get him to go to eight ounce gloves, I think. As uh, Earnhardt and uh, you're getting a lot of people coming over to tell you what they saw. What uh, tell us tell us what happened, Tony? Well, I mean, everybody's out there drafting today. There's no points paid today. There's no money paid today. It doesn't determine any starting positions today. And you know, Robbie got to run off a two on me, and I'm down on the inside by myself. And you know, the way this draft works, it's kind of the kind of like watching geese fly in the air. It's in a V, and, and I was ahead, and he got the draft and pulled ahead, so I tucked up next to him. And about the time I tucked up next to him, he's clear on the right side to start with, and he drives all the way down. And he didn't just turn all the way down, but he just eases it all the way down to the grass, down the back stretch. Eventually, I've got nowhere to go, and I stop turning. I got to go straight again, and he just keeps coming. He clips the right front, and he spins, and then he comes down here complaining to us. But uh, it's like you say, there's been everybody and their brother come down here, and none of them had a good thing to say about the guy yet. So uh... Tony Stewart was just simply frustrated at Robbie Gordon's antics during practice, and so were a whole bunch of other drivers, apparently. But in Robbie Gordon's defense, Tony Stewart did push him, and once you get pushed, you have every right to defend yourself. We now fast forward to the 2001 Winston Cup Series season. In fact, the next three are from this very same year. Robbie Gordon is in his second ride of the 2001 season up to this point. Driving Living in Jimmy Smith's number 7 Nations Rent Ford, he was in the lead with about 10 laps to go battling with Tony Stewart. Earlier in the race, Kevin Harvick had served a penalty and was put a lap down. Once he re-entered, he was in the middle of a battle going on for the lead approaching 10 to go. Rather than racing the second place car of Tony Stewart, Robbie Gordon had other plans trying to keep the lap car of Kevin Harvick behind him. Now this is Kevin Harvick in the 29, turn, turn 7. To turn 7. Turn 4 to turn 7. Harvick's there. Oh. Beating and banging, Stuart saw it happening. And Tony and asses. Stuart had you the see, momentum. The, you see, th this is just what drives me crazy. Robbie Gordon is worried about a lap car, and he lets Tony Stewart take the lead. And to make matters worse, that took place during a caution. So Tony Stewart took advantage of that track position and ended up winning that race. Robbie Gordon would get second and would actually blame Kevin Harvick sort of in his post-race interviews, saying he should have just let off, when in fact, 
Robbie Gordon should have just let him go by. Ironically, the duo would become teammates a few months later when Robbie Gordon landed his third ride of the 2001 season, driving the number 31 low Chevy for Richard Childress. At Watkins Glen, he perhaps had the best car the entire weekend. But during a green flag pit stop, his race would officially go up in smoke. Marty? Well, there's a fire inside the car of Robbie Gordon's. He just radioed to the crew and said, there's a fire, there's a fire. He came down pit road. The crew was, had no idea what was happening. As you hear Robbie on the radio trying to tell him what's going on, all they said was, I'm on fire. And the crew didn't know what was going on. He came down pit road. They saw the fire inside the car, trying to put it out. On Racing Reference, this is listed as an electrical DNF, but in reality, the NBC onboard camera just straight up caught fire. The battery pack for the camera caught fire while he was on pit road, and had that not happened, perhaps Robbie Gordon's first career Winston Cup Series win would have came that day at Watkins Glen but he would have to wait until the end of the year to officially achieve that goal. The season finale at New Hampshire already had the championship decided prior to it. Jeff Gordon was the 2001 Winston Cup champion. Meanwhile, the other Gordon, Robbie, was competing for his first career Winston Cup Series victory. With the Watkins Glen incident happening and him competing for the victory in the final race of the 2001 season, Robbie Gordon was going to do absolutely whatever it took, even if it meant completely dumping Gordon out of the way to score that first career victory. But let's keep an eye on this. Oh, Robbie Contact. got into the back of Jeff Gordon. Caution is out. Mike Wallace gets spun around. And Jeff Gordon has damage to the right front fender. He's got damage to the car and lost about three or four spots. It wasn't even a subtle dump neither. Robbie Gordon just drove it straight into the corner, right into the rear of Jeff Gordon, which also happened to tap the 12 of Mike Wallace. And to say Gordon was pissed would be an understatement. Jeff Gordon's usually a mild-mannered type driver, isn't really controversial, it's gonna race everybody clean, but obviously for this he was penalized while Robbie Gordon went on to score his first career victory in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. He should be embarrassed right now to win that race. Uh, it was gonna be a heck of a battle. I mean, it was between me and him anyway, you know, and uh, uh, I just wish it would have been done fair and square instead of just knocking the guy out of the way. I know you're thrilled, you've worked so hard to get here, but there are tough questions. Jeff Gordon said perhaps you should be embarrassed that you won this race in this fashion. I, I remember Jeff Gordon wrecking someone to win a race before, so I'm not embarrassed. I'm very proud to be driving a Lowe's car, and I can't wait to be driving the thing the car next year. And just like that, we're already into the 2002 Winston Cup season. Different colors with singular wireless coming on board to sponsor the 31 machine, only this time he would get involved with the future most popular driver award winner in Dale Earnhardt Jr. The 8 pulled a bump and run move early on in the race, and Robbie Gordon certainly didn't forget it. With about 12 laps to go, Robbie Gordon, a lap car, was battling and blocking the third place car of Dale Jr. It's safe to say at the end of the race, the two would have a mutual disagreement. Left before the checkered flag, and Robbie hey, Gordon. what are they doing here? Uh, Gets in the back of Jr. What happened was the 31 car raced the 8 car all those last few laps there and held him up. Dale, what's cooking? <laughs> Damn 31 wouldn't get out of the way. Lap down, racing the leaders with eight, 10 laps to go, but... Um, that's why he had to, that's why it takes three or four times for him to finally get into West Cup series because he don't pay attention, he don't know what he's doing. Now the next one we're talking about isn't really an incident, but it kind of leads into the next incident we're gonna talk about. In 2002 at Watkins Glen, Robbie Gordon was once again in the middle of it as he was competing for the win throughout the day with both Tony Stewart and Ryan Newman starting ahead of him. Now the final restart was gonna be critical in determining who was going to win this race. You tell me if Stewart jumped it. There he goes. Oh, that was pretty early. Green, green, green. Did Tony jump that last restart, you think? <laughs> Did he jump the last restart? No, he brake tacked us and he took off over um, way before the ghost of go mark. So, um, you know, that was disappointing because I thought we would have had a shot at him and uh, we weren't supposed to take off until that cone over here under the bridge. It's safe to say he was pretty fired up the following week, which just so happened to be Bristol, AKA the Sharpie 500. He was already taken out by Bobby Hamilton Sr. early and then later took out Ricky Craven, but was multiple laps down. In an effort to try and get back on the lead lap on one of the later restarts, Robbie Gordon went absolutely buck wild on future Cup Series champion Jimmy Johnson. Oh! 
then Jimmy Johnson gets turned right in the front of Mark Martin. John Andreas in the crash. Gordon just got bumped. Jeff Gordon just got, I don't know how much damage. Uh, Robbie Gordon just Look at the this. back of, uh, Look at this. Robbie's getting into everybody tonight. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie is saying on his radio that you missed a shift. What happened? Just like every form of racing he's ever been in, there's always it's always somebody else's fault. He had me turn sideways before we even took the green. I didn't even have a chance to grab a gear. He was beating my bumper cover off me coming to the green because he wanted to restart in front of me. I'm trying to get my lap back as well, so he's just crying up a river like he always does. It's a shame. We got a chance to win the championship and we get, get spun out before we even take the green on a restart. It's just it's wrong. Robbie, they're going to come in and hold you for two laps. What? It's not right because he missed the gear shift. They're going to hold me for two laps. I'm just telling you what they said. <laughs> I mean, why are they going to do that, Richard? I drove my butt off all day long, and he missed the gear shift, and I'm in trouble. 10-4. Single time, man. Just like about a jump to start last race. Just like Tony. The next incident wasn't a violation of NASCAR rules per se, but it was a violation of the old driver's code. Whenever a caution came out back in these days in the 2003 season, they used to race back to the line rather than freezing the field entirely. Instead, what Robbie Gordon did was make a pass on his teammate Kevin Harvick for the lead, coming to the line, and this was a race that he would eventually win. So in two of Robbie Gordon's three Cup Series wins, there was something controversial. Fast forward to the 2004 season and Robbie Gordon would be in another controversial moment again, this time in the first ever race for the chase. During the inaugural chase race in 2004, him and Greg Biffle got into a bit of a scuffle during the race. Robbie Gordon did what he usually does and paid Greg Biffle back entirely. The thing is, is that it also involved two chase contenders in the first ever chase race in both Tony Stewart and Jeremy Mayfield. Sure, they were lower seeds entering the chase, and they probably weren't going to make a title run anyways, but still, the fact that Robbie Gordon somehow affected the first ever chase for the cup race is funny. Oh, I see. This is a payback from the further oh. spin out with Robbie Gordon. That's exactly what it is. And like I said, unfortunately, you get guys that have nothing to do with that running for the championship cost them. Yep. Remember earlier we saw the 31 car being spin, being spun by the 16, and this time that's the payback. Let me have to say, see if there's a call on this one. That this was a payback, and this is what needs to be done, and I uh, commend NASCAR for this it. This time they looked at the tapes and said, we're going to penalize Robbie Gordon two laps for rough driving. We finally moved to the NASCAR Bush Series, where Robbie Gordon had a pretty underrated career in my opinion. His only Bush Series career win came at Richmond of all places. Yes, Richmond, not a road course. But a race in particular in 2004 always caught my eye. The 2004 SpongeBob SquarePants The Movie was always a funny race to me, considering the fact that after Robbie Gordon got dumped on the straightaway by a future Cup Series regular in Clint Boyer, he tries to find a loophole in the most obvious way when it comes to trying to get new tires on his car. He had a flat tire. What's going on in the car? Something, something is amiss. Maybe something got twisted when he was spun around. Had to go through the grass, onto the asphalt, grass, asphalt. Looks like there's something wrong as far as locking up. Looks like he just touched the brakes and the wheels lock up. A.B., there is a tire rule here in the Bush Series. When you run out of tires, yeah, you might possibly try to get a flat. I got you. You think? So that way NASCAR will then say, yes, you do indeed have a damaged tire. We will give you another tire. A year later in the 2005 Sylvania 300, the first race of the 2005 chase for the cup, Robbie Gordon was once again at the center of another incident, this time involving Michael Waltrip, who wasn't in the chase for the cup that season. Both were fighting hard trying to get back on the lead lap in the later stages of the race, fast approaching 100 laps to go. While a caution did come out for Mike Bliss having an incident on the front stretch entering turn one, another accident happened simultaneously. Oh, oh, oh wow. Robbie Gordon with a hard hit. Michael Waltrip we're hearing involved. Like 
Michael turned the seven car into the outside wall. Bill, I believe the car he's looking for is the Napa Chevrolet. Now, he said on the radio a number of comments, as Michael just went by, about the 15. Then he said, NASCAR, I hope you're listening. I will pay Michael Waltrip back. I think he's going to try to pay him back with his helmet. I don't know. Robbie really loves his helmets. Yeah. Those paint jobs are quite expensive, they, too, Wally. They are, Matt. You're right. That's why you have second thoughts. Okay, here we go. Car with the helmet off. Uh, record just got there now. Let's see the accuracy. And it's a shot. Oh. Oh. Well, I guess you don't like the helmet that bad. He helmet at my car. I told you that. What's going on? Well, that's just rude. It was his fault. You know, Michael, everybody thinks Michael's this good guy. He's not the good guy like he actually is. The caution was out, and he wrecked me. And he's a piece of shit. And I don't want this 20-something minute video to get demonetized, so we will just cut that out for a moment. Safe to say Robbie Gordon was pretty pissed, but in Michael Waltrip's defense, he was saying that Robbie Gordon was forcing him up the track. Robbie Gordon says he just straight up dumped him coming off of turn two. To be quite honest, I can't really tell whose fault it was from this angle, so let me know down below in the comments what you think. The final Cup Series incident on this list takes place in the 2006 Bass Pro Shops MBNA 500. Now pay attention to the leaderboard on the top of your screen. Robbie Gordon, currently in P15, is one lap down. In order to get back on the lead lap, he would need a caution to cycle through the field and become the lucky dog. He would get just that with around 34 laps to go when a caution came out for a piece of debris on the backstretch. Chaos would ensue in the late stages of the race, and if you pay attention to the leaderboard once again, Robbie Gordon would finish 10th scoring his third top 10 of 2006. Although this celebration would be short-lived as it was later discovered shortly after the race that Robbie Gordon was the perpetrator of that debris caution that affected the entire outcome of the race. I drove it in a wall and uh, so that, then it cut a tire and that got us behind again, but we were gonna be okay and they threw the caution for a piece of roll bar pad. You were upset about that. Well, I mean, they ought to stop every car on pit road and they ought to check every car and whoever threw the roll bar pad now, they ought to find them 185 points and about 100 grand because it's a huge impact on the race. And, you know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It happens too often and NASCAR gets on everybody when they do it when they need to figure out who did it and penalize them. And we're looking there. Looks like he might have come down the seventh car of Robbie Gordon. So, um, top 10 finish for you. Great night for you. We were looking at some debris possibility coming out of your car, roll bar padding, anything like that going on? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, we had a good run tonight. We broke a diff late in the race and had a shot at probably uh, better finish than 10th. So I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the run we had tonight. Looked like it came out from the back of the car, actually. This is clearly the most guiltiest interview in NASCAR history by far. I can't think of any other interview off the top of my head where they directly find a competitor straight up breaking the rules outside of the Clint Boyer 2013 Richmond fiasco, of course. Robbie Gordon was fined and docked multiple driver's points for this incident, but if you think that was peak Robbie Gordon shenanigans, the final race on this list will change your mind entirely. The 2007 Napa Auto Parts 200 at Montreal. Robbie Gordon is bread and butter when it comes to this course in particular, and it's showing in the race we're talking about. He's able to compete in the later stages for the lead with fellow road course ringer Marcos Ambrose. When all of a sudden chaos began to ensue in the closing laps, with less than five laps to go at the time of caution, Ambrose dumped Robbie Gordon, and for some reason, NASCAR decided that Robbie Gordon was to start at the tail end of the field. That's quite unfair in my opinion, and obviously Robbie Gordon thought so too, but instead of listening to the sanctioning body of NASCAR telling him what to do, Robbie Gordon decided to just hold his place right in second spot. And in typical Robbie Gordon fashion, he would get his way in terms of payback. There it is. Couldn't see that coming, could you? Uh, he might just have to drive off the island because NASCAR might be just a little mad at him. All right, so the lead is changing hands here. Now Kevin Harvick has just gone out in front. 
a confusing situation to this race. Robbie Gordon may now be first in line on the racetrack, but the lead belongs to Kevin Harvick. After those strange sequence of events had taken place, NASCAR just straight up decided to stop scoring Robbie Gordon entirely. Kevin Harvick was the official winner of the 2007 Napa Auto Parts 200 in Montreal, but Robbie Gordon was technically the first to cross the line, and in some fans' eyes, including myself, he's the real winner. And obviously, he feels he's the real winner as well because he was doing burnouts on the front stretch with Harvick, despite officially finishing 18th. Robbie Gordon was suspended for the rest of the NASCAR weekend, which included the Cup Series race at Pocono the following day. Robbie Gordon is always going to be viewed as a motorsports legend in my eyes and in the eyes of many motorsports fans around the world. But his on-track shenanigans made him one of the greatest characters to ever step foot in the world of NASCAR. And quite frankly, I miss characters such as his and wish we had more of them in the sport today. My hope is that someday with the abundance of road courses we are going to see on the Cup Series schedule for the 2021 season and beyond, perhaps we could potentially see a brief return of Robbie Gordon on these road course races perhaps. More than likely, he's probably not interested. I know him and NASCAR didn't have the greatest relationship in the world in these days, but it would be pretty cool to see this guy come back to the circuit. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.